Hi, friends. Today we are going to talk about elevated bilirubin and particularly about indirect, indirect bilirubin. I am not going to talk about elevated ALT and AST in this case because they get elevated when the damage to the liver by alcohol or by viruses done. And this is not the topic of the today's presentation, only total bilirubin and indirect bilirubin. So you get laboratory work and you see those two numbers elevated and you're thinking, what is going on in my body? So here I put for you a list of the possible diseases that may increase indirect bilirubin from more, from um, um, dangerous one to kind of light one. So A, polycythemia vera is a basically cancer of red blood cells. B is increased destruction of red blood cells. RBC says red blood cells. So red blood cells could have a deficiency of enzymes such as glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase, and they are very unstable. Also, spherocytes are not very stable. Sickle, cell, sickle cells are not stable, and the same could be said about thalassemia. In our immune condition, all our own immune system will attack red blood cells, and they will get broken. Gilbert syndrome is uh, genetic predisposition deficiency of the certain enzymes that do conjugation in the liver. Also, bacterial and viral infections such as hepatitis, I am not talking here about hepatitis A, B, and C because they will, when they get, um, person get infection, then ALT and AST will be elevated. I'm talking about ED and all different kinds of hepatitis that will uh, increase indirect bilirubin, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, babesiosis, also parvovirus may increase indirect bilirubin. In keto diet, due to high consumption of fat, uh, the, uh, the tissues of the liver get substituted with the fat as a result, conjugation is cannot happen and um, indirect bilirubin will go up. Before we go for the explanation, why in those conditions, indirect bilirubin and as a consequence, direct bilirubin will go up, you need to know several uh, terms. So look at the slide and please memorize it because I'm going to use these terms. Bilirubin is the orange pigment that comes from red blood cells called erythrocytes and the pigment called heme. Total bilirubin is merely a sum of indirect bilirubin plus direct bilirubin. As you can see from this ratio, if indirect bilirubin will go up for different reasons that I just named for, because of different diseases, right? Total bilirubin also will be elevated. Indirect bilirubin means it is not conjugated yet. On the laboratory work, it will be marked as unconjugated bilirubin. Direct bilirubin is conjugated, means it went through the process of conjugation. And conjugation is enzymatic process that takes place in the liver. And it makes um, uh, substances, um, it makes them more soluble. So um, I would just want to explain you, when the red blood cells or erythrocytes broke and the heme gets re released into the bloodstream, and let's say it looks like that, right and um it floats in the blood and because of the shape it just cannot go um through the liver as a result it gets stuck there so with the conjugation during the conjugation habit it gets more water salts it becomes direct okay as a result it goes easy through the through the liver get excreted into gallbladder also get into the bloodstream floating there and could get excreted through the uh through the kidney now, let's go to the blackboard and um, uh, I will explain you why those diseases will cause elevated indirect bilirubin. As always, I already pre-draw for us our fa my favorite uh, uh, picture of the digestive tract. So this is mouse with the teeth. Uh, the food will go here, esophagus, stomach, small intestine. Uh, this is the large intestine. And we are going to the bathroom right here. This a uh, big green object is a liver and um, it does detoxification sta stage one and stage two is conjugation. Conjugation. 
Okay, this is the gallbladder. Bile get accumulated here and will go through the bile duct into the small intestine and um, uh, get into small intestine. Two blood vessels will come into the uh, liver. One is comes from all organs over, over the body and will bring blood, blood here. Let's draw also spleen here. Um, in the blood, different cells will flow, including red blood cells called erythrocytes. Under the microscope, they looked as a donut. Uh, those erythrocytes have a lifespan, about 120 days. After 120 days, and sometimes before that, because they get damaged or they get old, they will go into the spleen and they will die here. And out of the spleen, the dead erythrocytes come in form of, or let's say, debris of the, those dead erythrocytes come into this uh, bloodstream and they'll go into the liver in form of him. And that's what this the pig, pigment is. In normal circumstances, all of this heme is taken in, conjugated, get uh, direct bilirubin and floats and get excreted. It's, it goes here into the gallbladder and get excreted on small intestine and then will go through the large intestine and come out as a stool. And that's what determines color of the stool, brown, that's orange pigment, it makes it brown. Or part of that get excreted out of, um, out of the uh, liver. So that's one bloodstream. The second blood, the blood vessel comes here uh, out of the digestive tract. The, when food that we eat, um, get up, nutrients get absorbed into a bloodstream. This is the bloodstream, okay? Vitamins, minerals, uh, amino acids, chemicals, drugs all fall here. And also they will come here and uh, they will get in into the liver. So it's basically a second blood vessel actually. Uh, to be more correctly, this is the second blood vessels. Also will go through the detox. Out of the liver, clean blood without chemicals will get out and will get into uh, different organs. This is the lungs. Out of the lungs, it will go into the heart. Out of the heart, it will get into the kidneys. Out of the kidneys, the spleen and so on, and will come back eventually. Because all of these organs have cells and they are cells alive there. And as a result of the life of the cells they they need to get rid of the substances that cells don't want so kind of dirty blood comes comes here and it's you know a lot of dirt debris of the cells and him all comes here and picked up by the liver and get conjugated now uh let's talk about uh the uh, the diseases that will increase indirect bilirubin or increase of concentration of the heme right so polycythemia vera uh, means that when a lot of red blood cells, so, so this is the bone made in the bone marrow. So this is the bone marrow and a lot of red blood cells, electrocytes made it. So a lot, a lot of love of them. So we have so many of them because there are so many of them, they crowd and they actually, a lot of them will start to die because they die. They get out of the sp uh, spleen in form of him. Concentration of the him goes up. On the laboratory work, that will be seen as indirect bilirubin because it comes here through, through the blood, through the blood, and just liver doesn't have enough that much enzymes to conjugate that much him, right? So the next is when um, there is a problem with um, enzymes with, with, within those red blood cells, uh, like uh, spherocytosis, def enzyme deficiencies. Um, sickle cell disease when uh, erythrocytes actually looks like uh, uh, like that. Uh, so they are not very stable. They get easy broken. Those broken cells means that a lot of heme uh, floating in the bloodstream means indirect bilirubin is elevated. Now, um, conjugation, as I said, done by um, enzymes. And um, they live right here in the liver. And if there is a deficiency in um, Gilbert syndrome, so the con this, all this heme that comes here cannot be conjugated. As a result, uh, it just, everything is back up. Uh, the heme is not conjugated. You look at the laboratory work, indirect bilirubin is elevated. Also, uh, viruses, autoimmune conditions um, uh, will break those re uh, red blood cells 
the more red blood cells broken by red blood cells or bacteria, the higher concentration of the heme. So conjugation is not that fast process. As a result, everything back up. As a result, indirect bilirubin is elevated. In uh, uh, with the keto diet, the problem is the following. People consume too much fat. As a result, tissues of the liver get substituted with the fat. As a result, just fatty liver cannot work. So everything that happened in the blood above this second, uh, above the conjugation, everything, so bruises, bleeding into the lungs, destruction of red blood cells above the conjugation. So all everything here above the conjugation, okay, means that indirect bilirubin will be elevated. Okay. Let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. So let's talk about the solution. What you can do to uh, decrease total bilirubin and indirect bilirubin. Well, if person has a uh, blood cancer, obviously, uh, you're going to oncologist. Increased destruction of red blood cells. All of this uh, enzymatic deficiency, uh, stereocytosis, sickle cell, thalassemia. Uh, people born with those conditions, they know what kind of food will actually contribute to a greater breakage of the cell. So they don't eat that food or they eat the food that actually will preserve the red blood cells. So they know about that. They also may take supplements of vitamins and minerals. So that may st stabilize the cell membrane. Uh, I think I will make an additional video on autoimmune conditions. If person has autoimmune condition, the first thing that you do, look at your digestive tract, irritable bowel disease, uh, IBS, IBD, Crohn disease, um, um, chronic constipation, dysbiosis. So these problems have to be solved because, because um, all these conditions will contribute to um, increased digestive tract permeability and then you know substances appear in the bloodstream that you don't want and they will contribute to our immune conditions. Also think about dehydration, uh, uh, bruises, you know, and bleeding look for, for that. Uh, before you look actually and do genetic testing to determine a Gilbert syndrome, it's a good idea to look at, into bacterial and viral infection, uh, hepatitis, cytomegalovirus infection, Epstein-Barr, malaria. Think about if you travel abroad into the country where those diseases are present, uh, parvovirus, often a viral infection that affect dogs and cats and we love our animals with you kiss them, you know, you, it could be transmitted. Think about blood transfusion. If you had, so cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr, so a babesiosis can come with a blood transfusion. Think also about keto diet because it's high fat substitution of the tissues in the liver with fat will exacerbate uh, Gilbert syndrome and you will see indirect bilirubin and then direct bilirubin. That's basically it for today, guys. If you want me as a health coach, please contact on my website, uh, like, subscribe. It's again, a uh, long to long uh, video. I hope you, you can manage that. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.